Good morning, everybody. I'm so grateful to be with you all this morning. Some of you I know, some of you I don't. But I wanted to let you know that I am honored to be back at, at Shepherd of the Hills. And I say back as, as Beth indicated earlier. By the way, y'all don't even really need to hear the sermon. She planned it so well that you've heard everything I'm going to say in her music, in her message today. So y'all know, you know how blessed you are to have Beth. I mean, really, amazing. I whispered that to Jim. We can just go home, okay? Uh, but I say back because I actually did my seminary internship at Shepherd of the Hills, believe it or not, uh, back when Larry Coulter was pastor here. Larry and Jim and I were old Young Life buddies, and he had just gotten here into Austin, and so I was able to do my uh, internship here. I remember a few of y'all from that time. My assignment that summer was to do a feasibility study about planting a church in Dripping Springs. Who knew, right? Uh, I guess Larry and God. And, uh, and uh, so I did that and then uh, presented it to your session. And, and session put it on their agenda for the f- next few years, five years maybe or something. And then a few years later, I went off and did something else and then ended up, came, uh, came back. I uh, came back as a short period of time as what we, Larry and I named Parish Associate for New Church Development. We sort of invented it, but it worked. And I was able to be around y'all for about six months. And, uh, and um, some of you all were amazing and actually chose to leave Shepherd of the Hills and come and help plant uh, DSPC, Dripping Springs Post Church. We launched in 2005, and I just want to personally thank you all. Even if you weren't here, the DNA of Shepherd of the Hills, that's the DNA of Shepherd of the Hills. You're the kind of church that wants to impact the world beyond where you're sitting today. And so thank you all for all that you have done. Uh, it's such a blessing. Um, I uh, retired from there in 2000, uh, well, let's see, 2020. Yes. Everybody thinks I probably had, uh, had a leg up on knowing that the pandemic was coming. I promise I didn't. It's just the timing God gave me. Um, Jim, I'm married to Jim. We've been married for 48 years. Woo! Long time. We have uh, two kids, and they and their spouses live in the Austin area, and we have seven grandkids. And so that's mostly what I do these days after retiring, although Jim and I love to travel, and um, so we do a, a lot of traveling as well. Um, so, I'm, so I'm grateful to be here, especially when you're doing this live differently theme. I think that's awesome because the truth is, as followers of Jesus, we are really commanded uh, and, in, and equipped to live differently so that we can impact and influence our world uh, for Christ. And you all know that is not simply a matter of enough willpower, right? Just like willpower can take us only so far. Uh, we were talking earlier about grandchildren, Beth and Jim and I were. Um, this last week, Jim and I kept our Three, our three granddaughters that are four, six, and seven. We kept them for three days. And they're a handful. I love them, but they're a handful. And beforehand, I was just willing myself, like, okay, um, I will be loving and kind. I won't scream at them. I'm, you know, I can be kind of, I, I love them, but, you know, I, ha. And uh, so I really did well, y'all. Willpower pulled me through for a while. And I made it till the morning of taking them home that afternoon. They were outside, and I heard this screaming and yelling. And I uh, went outside, what's going on? And I just lost it when they had actually deleted, fighting over my iPhone, they had deleted a bunch of my pictures. I went to a dark place. <laughs> I'm just saying, I went to a dark place. Um, and uh, that's not a fun place to be. So today we're going to look at a scripture from Ephesians. Uh, Paul is writing to this new church at Ephesus, and, and he's talking really about uh, more than just having willpower to, to influence people for the name of Jesus. He, he's, he's talking about something much larger than that, that we are equipped in, in a certain way uh, to shine his light. And so I want to tell you a little bit, you probably know, but a little bit about Ephesus. This was an important message for these folks, this new church. They were, um, 
They were new believers, as all of them were in the first century, uh, had just come to Christ, and they were in this atmosphere of this port city, very cosmopolitan place of Ephesus, and now in modern Turkey. Um, but it, its whole culture uh, and its religion and its businesses all revolved around the worship of Artemis, who was the goddess of fertility. So you can go there and figure out what all it looked like, right? And, uh, and it was, that was the world that they were living in before uh, they met Christ. And so uh, he's writing to them in that context. And the truth is, if we're, if we're honest, um, there may be some similarities in terms of uncertainty and darkness that we see in our own environment and world today. And so not only is this a message for the Ephesians, but hopefully for you and me as well. I'll be reading from, well, let's get the Bible right. Here we go. Uh, and I actually printed it out here in big print. I am old. Uh, in big print uh, because I wasn't sure if I could read it back there. So listen for God's word to you. For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. Some translations say children of light. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret, but their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them, for the light makes everything visible. That is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you uh, for the opportunity to gather and to worship. And I just ask that whatever would be of, of no use uh, to you today, Lord, that you would let fall away. But what would rise up uh, is um, a sense of your good news, of your gospel, and that we would be people changed because of that today. That we would be shaped a bit more into the people you have wanted us to be for your sake. And we pray in your name. Amen. A number of years ago, I said Jim and I ought to travel. We were in Switzerland, and, uh, and similar to the story that Beth told, talked about with old Rob, um, we were in, uh, we were in this, we'd been traveling, we were tired, so we were in this room, hotel room. It was beautiful, but we closed the curtains because we wanted to sleep late. And in the middle of the night, I did the female thing. I had to get up and go to the bathroom, you know. So, uh, and so I, I got up and I forgot that there was this huge glass table at the end of the bed. So I was turning the corner, you guessed it. Hit the table, it smashed, fell, smashed, cut me a little bit, dislocated my shoulder. And ended up, you know, in a, in a Swiss uh, emergency room because of that. All because... I didn't want to turn on a light. You know, just a little bit of light, a little bit of light would have helped me see where I was going. But instead I stumbled and fell, hurt myself. And that's what the point is Paul's making really for you and for me and for the Ephesians is whenever we are without light, when we're in the dark, living in darkness, we tend to stumble and fall, and we often hurt ourselves, and we hurt others. That's the message that Paul is wanting these folks to know uh, in the, in the uh, this new church in Ephesus, that we can tend to stumble and fall, and that's the message he wants them to understand. Uh, you don't have to live that way. You have been woken up. The light. The light wasn't, it's come uh, to us, to be with us. It wasn't like God just put a sign and said, be careful in the dark. Uh, that's not what God did. Instead, God just chose to put on skin, right? The Gospel of John tells us he put on skin. And in Eugene Peterson's words, he moved into our neighborhood. He moved in to be with us. The light with us, not shining in a distance, but to literally be with us. And the message is, 
like wake up. Like if you were in the middle of the night and somebody, have you ever had this happen before? Uh, you f- they flip on the overhead light and you wake up out of the darkness. That's what God is like, wake up. The light is here. And it's the light of Christ that lives in us. And, and, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wake up call to the Ephesians and hopefully to you and me as well. Um, uh, there was it's a great story about Robert Louis Stevenson, maybe you all have heard it, that when he was a boy, this is the 19th century, uh, as a boy he lived in Edinburgh, Scotland, and he was up against the window um, watching uh, one evening at dusk, he was watching a man climb up a ladder, light, uh, light the light on the lamppost and climb back down the ladder, ladder, go to the next one, do the same thing over and over, and his parents said, what are you doing? He said, I'm watching that man punch holes in the darkness. And I love that saying, because really that's what we're getting from this. Jesus came to punch holes in our darkness. Punch holes in the darkness. And that means whatever darkness right now that we may be personally living with, Maybe uh, whatever it could be. Um, This message is a hopeful message because the message in John as well as uh, no amount of darkness will overcome the light, the light of Christ that has been lit within us. He is the one who punches holes in our darkness. So I don't know what darkness you may be dealing with today. Um, It may be addiction that you have worked really hard to overcome yourself, and you think you can do it, you think you can do it, and then you fail. This is good news, right? It could be your marriage or a friendship or a a family fracture, uh, and then you just really think, I'm going to fix it, this will fix it, this will fix it, and it just doesn't get fixed. This is good news. If you are living in the middle of a Uh, a situation of circumstances is just paralyzing you, paralysis with fear, right? Uh, If that's where you are and you can't seem to move forward, this is good news. And for lots of us who live in this world and look around at the darkness and the uncertainty and and we have to wonder, is, is 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 the darkness gonna win? And this is good news, because we are not to do this on our own. We are given, as people of light, as children of light, this light to to live within us. That's what it looks like for Jesus to begin to punch holes in our darkness. And maybe, maybe it starts with something as simple. I'm a pretty simple person. I'm not very theological, so this is the way I think of it. It's simple, it's as simple as saying, um, Lord, Lord, will you come and punch a hole in my darkness today? Maybe that's the prayer you need today. Lord, just come and punch a hole in this part of my darkness today. And scripture promises us that he, uh, he does, did, and will continue to do that. If that's where you are today, I just invite you to say that very simple prayer with the heart surrendered and willing to trust. But you know, that's not all that Jesus said that he was coming to give light to. He didn't just say, I am, which he did say, I am the light of the world. Uh, He also said, you are the light of the world, right? He's like, Tad, you're it. Uh, Not only am I the light of the world, you now are our light of the world. And so what I take from that is means it's like, um, okay, uh, not only are we light of the world, we're actually hole punchers too, right? Now our command is go punch some holes in the darkness wherever you find it. And so think of yourself at walking along, and I can get so isolated, I'm telling y'all, retirement isolates you. in some good ways. It's not all bad, but you know, your world becomes smaller and you don't have to do the thing you did before. It's easy to begin walking along and go right past a ladder where there's an opportunity to climb up and punch a hole in the darkness. Uh, It's easy to pass those by. But Jesus wants us to have eyes to see those ladders when the opportunity comes. 
Because not only is it an opportunity for you and for me to punch hole in the darkness of this world uh, that seems so uncertain and out of whack in many ways, um, it also begins to do something within us to transform us a bit more into the image that he has for us. People who live a bit more in the light that says, move, I will move you toward what is good and what is right and what is true. And it's amazing when those opportunities come along. Uh, A few weeks ago, Jim and I were in, yes, traveling again. We were, this is like a travel log by Nancy and Jim, right? We were in Oregon and we got a phone call. I got a phone call from my friend Lynn from, uh, she's a, a part of Dripping Springs Presbyterian Church. But she was calling me to ask me if I would come pray a prayer uh, when, uh, while, uh, just before a home was going to be demolished so that a new home could be put on. She's a part of Hometown Mission, which is an amazing organization in Dripping Springs. Started, um, I'm proud to say, uh, this is, you know, this is the right kind of pride, right? Uh, that DSPC was a part of starting that with other local churches about 17, 15, 17 years ago or so. Uh, and, and the goal mission was to bring the community together, uh, to repair and even build homes for people with with the vision is nobody, nobody in that community should live in a home that is unsafe, uh, unhealthy environment anyway. That's their mission and they've done incredible things. So Lynn says, Nancy, will you come next Friday? I think this was like Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, Nancy, will you come on Friday and offer a prayer before the demolition? And, And then she said, Uh, You need to be there at 8 o'clock. Okay, again, I'm retired. I don't normally get up and have to do stuff at 8 o'clock in the morning anymore. It's like, so there was just that temptation to move past that ladder because it was going to be too much trouble to climb up it that day. But only by God's grace, I said, fine. And because I love Lynn, it would have been embarrassing to say, no, I want to sleep a little later. So I said, sure, I'll do it. So that morning, I get up early and... I'm thinking to myself, a prayer, a demo, a demo prayer, you know, a prayer for demolition. Okay, I actually Googled prayer for demolition. <laughs> the Catholics have prayers for demolition. They do. And it's like, no, that's not really what I'm looking for. So I started moving, so I got in the car, started driving, and if y'all know Dripping Springs these days, we, we have almost as much traffic as Austin. So it took me a while to get to the place where I was going, and I had plenty of time to think about what I wanted to say. So I was thinking through this and this and this, and nothing was wrong right and finally you know I did the thing that we all should do I just thought okay okay Lord what do you want me to say I actually stopped and prayed for a second imagine that and uh and what I got was not much (laughs) I didn't get this message really except that just kind of like quit worrying about it stop worrying let go you know just let go just get just get there just get there when I got there the first thing that came to mind is I stepped outside and I thought I wonder how these people feel watching their home be torn down. Even if it wasn't healthy, right? Even if it's not a safe place. This is a home people had had for, this woman had come home, she's 51 years old, she'd come home to that place, to this mobile home uh, that many years ago. So I, I, so I just said to a couple of them that live there, this is the Zapata family, I said, so how does it feel uh, to have your home be torn down? And, it was really interesting. It would be probably what you and I would think. Instead, we want them to all go, oh, I'm so giddy. It's wonderful. I never liked that place anyway. No, this was their home. She went, well, it's, I'm mixed. I have a lot of memories in the house. And I know it needs to go, but I have a lot of memories. It's kind of hard. I'm excited, but hard. And so we chatted for a minute. But also, have y'all been in these places where you feel like there's chatter going on and there's some tension going on? And you're kind of going, I don't know what's happening but there's something, tension, there's tension in this place. So sure enough, that was true. That's the sense I got. My friend Lynn came up and she said, Nancy, come with, will you come with me um, over to this? We're having some issues. And she walk, as we were walking over to a trailer next across a little walkway, she said, um, the, the, uh, this neighbor, Liza, doesn't want us to bring in the big machine, doesn't want to use this driveway to bring the big machine in. It's the only way they could get in to do the demo. And, um, and she said, so uh, we need to talk her into it. And it's like, great. 
great, you know, wonderful, no pressure. But, but as we walked up, she said, you might remember Liza. A few years ago, we tore down her old, uh, removed her old trailer, and this is a new one, four years ago. And I went, oh, I actually remembered Liza. So we walked in, and I said hi. And what we sat there and did for the next almost hour, I just listened to her heartbreak, her bitterness, her pain that had developed over time, this sort of you know, cloak of darkness had taken over these two families. Uh, and, and, and she told me about, you know, it, it, it goes both ways, doesn't it, usually? Uh, that what they had done and she, this other person had done and this man, you know, it's all of that. But here's the thing, y'all. Liza and Rachel Zapata used to be best friends. Best friends across the driveway from each other. And over time, this darkness had set in, bitterness, resentment, and she just one she didn't want them to have a new home. I mean, she was that's how bitter she was about it. And and so we did a lot of talking and praying. We talked a lot about forgiveness and how, you know, forgiveness lifts off the shoulders of the person more. You can't control what it does to the other person, but when you forgive, it does something to you. And we were talking about all that, and in the back of my mind I'm thinking, yeah, well, what about that family member? Not immediate, it's my extended family, so y'all probably don't know them. But, uh, but in the back of my thinking, I'm like, okay, you can preach it, Nancy. But are you willing to live it? Uh, are you willing to give forgiveness to this person? And I'm, so I'm talking, at the same time I'm going, really, it's a lot easier to preach about it than it is to do it, right? And, 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 and but finally, we got to a place where we prayed. And after we prayed, um, we went out and, and the demo, uh, demolition began. The machine came up the driveway and it began to be demolished. We were standing and watching it with the family and out of the corner of my eye I looked over and there was Liza from next door standing on, uh, on the lawn. I went up to her and said hi and about that time Rachel, the woman whose house was being He's given a new home, saw her, came up to her. And this incredible moment of them walking up to one another. And Rachel says, I have missed you so much. You know, and in that moment, that sort of the bitterness and the pain, uh, even justified or not, gave way. And they hugged one another and the tears started and you better believe we all started crying too when we saw what was going on. And then the next miracle, um, Rachel said, can I bring over my husband, her husband who had really been an issue with Liza? And I thought, oh, is this, how's this gonna go? You know, doubtful me, oh, it could all blow up now. And, and, uh, and they brought, he came over and I watched as the three of them hugged one another. And then they turned, and together they watched this home de be demolished so that a new portable home, modular home, could come in. And I saw a huge hole punched in darkness that day. For sure, I saw it, that a, uh, that a home that had been unsafe and true, nobody should live in those conditions. And, and, and that, was gonna be, uh, that was gonna be gone and a new home would be there. That is absolutely light into the darkness, right? But y'all, it was nothing compared. Nothing compared to this floodlight, the power, the reconciliation of Jesus, the light who just, the light just flooded onto that place and onto these folks, to these two families. The power of reconciliation. I'm not sure that really happens without the light of Christ. And y'all, I could have missed it. I came this close to missing it for several reasons. Laziness, out of town, I don't know. I could have missed it, y'all, I could have missed it. And I don't want to miss it again, and I don't want any of y'all to miss those opportunities again. 
you know, that opportunity to be a hole puncher for Jesus. So on this fourth Sunday of Lent, here's what I would just encourage us uh, to do. To think through for a minute, uh, uh, what does it look like to be walking through your everyday life and notice that there's a ladder there. (laughs) There's an opening, there's a way, a way that is set towards good and right and true things. And are we willing to make the step to climb the ladder? I love the way Paul ends that scripture where he says, and I want it to be for us and too, friends, let's wake up, right? Let's rise up. Let's climb up. Let's dare to live differently because we have the light of Jesus in us. May we be people who are willing to go out and punch some holes in the darkness in the name of Jesus. And I promise you that is living differently. And it will transform our environments and our own lives one punch at a time. And may it be so. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that you didn't ask us to follow you and do uh, this thing of following your son Jesus alone. You didn't ask us to do it alone. You, you gave us your spirit, and your son, your very light to live within us. We are so grateful. We ask, Lord, that whatever darkness within each one of us today personally, we ask, Lord, that we would be able just to, to, to lay it at your feet. And for the places that you are calling us to, to surrender, to actually be people of light, to be hole punchers, Lord, open our hearts and our minds so that it would be so. We are grateful that Jesus taught us uh, this amazing prayer that gives us life and gives us a way forward, and we pray now together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.